Kevin Ioli, it is great to talk to you, sir. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I am happy to be with you, Ryan. Thank you for having me. Hey, absolutely. And, uh, you know, listen, we, we do talk a lot of, you know, Nick Saban championships here, but we're certainly proud of what Deontay Don't Wilder. Don't be bragging now. Come on. Well, I mean, it's only five out of the last nine years. Uh, you know, <laughs> only five out of the last nine years. But uh, we're also proud of, of our heavyweight champion as well in, in Deontay Wilder. And well, you should be. He is, uh, he is a heck of a player. Well, and, and I want to I want to get your thoughts on a lot of different things as he goes into this Lewis Ortiz fight. But let's go back and and just kind of understand Deontay Wilder. We we know the local story, but just the the first time you hear about Deontay Wilder, and then we kind of worked our way to this point where you know he's getting ready to uh, to go through Lewis Ortiz, and if he wins that, then everybody's talking about the big fight that could be up on the horizon. Just talk about Deontay Wilder and maybe the first time you hear about this guy, you see him and the development side of him to get to this point. Well, I saw him in the uh, Olympic Club. So I saw him as a guy that you know was kind of a young, untested guy that really didn't know, uh, you know where he fit in in box. But you could see that he had two things that, not a lot of heavyweights have, you know, he had athletic ability and he had extremely fast hands. When, you know, when you have those two things, you get with good people and you, you work on it, you know, you can develop. And Deontay, uh, I think what sets him apart, you know, everybody talks about the punching power. And of course, you know, he is a, a huge uh, puncher, but I think what really sets him apart from a lot of the other heavyweights is, you know, he can get there before you get there. You know, he, you know, it's like a running back that can, you know, there's a little bit of a crease there and he makes it go through that hole. Deontay can get that punch in where other guys can't. And uh, I think that, that really makes him uh, uh, separate from the other guys. And so I've seen him for a long time, you know, he, he, he took a slow time to develop. You know, there, A, there aren't a lot of heavyweights uh, out there, a lot of really good ones. And his his uh, starting the Golden Boy first, and then you know now without him developing, they kind of moved him very methodically. And so he kept on it. Is he the real deal? Because they weren't showing a lot of faith in him, uh, and I know that frustrated him. But you know he's proven uh, himself that he can fight, and I think you know Saturday night is going to be the the really big fight for him because that is the biggest fight of his career at that point, and that's kind of I like blocking the keys to the kingdom. You win that fight. And forget about it. You're, you know, it's going to be really good. You've written about this on Yahoo.com, Yahoo Sports. We're talking with Kevin Ioli, the combat columnist who's been covering boxing and combat sports for a long time. Deontay Wilder uh, finally enters the big league Saturday versus Luis Ortiz. Let's talk about this this match, and, and let's go to Luis Ortiz. For those who may not be familiar with him, that may not be as, as close as you are to the game uh, of the world of boxing, explain to us what Luis Ortiz brings in that ring. Well, Luis is a, a big, strong, powerful guy, left-handed, and I never discount that. I mean, you don't, especially in heavyweight, you don't see a lot of left-handed guys out there. And Ortiz is a left-hander who can punch. And, you know, guys hate fighting left-handers because, you know, he makes you move the opposite way, and everything is kind of reversed of what you're normally seeing. And uh, it takes a lot of work for that. And Ortiz is, you know, six four. It's going to be about 240, 245, uh, and he can punch. So, you know, while Deontay is a, a, a big guy, he's going to hang a really big guy right in front of him and a guy that can knock him out if he hits him on the chin. So I think this is the fight and, you know, really is a, is a great match. And I wish it had taken place uh, earlier. You know, I know they were supposed to fight last year, and I think that would have been such a, a wonderful fight. But uh, doing it now, I think with the, with Anthony Joshua and Joseph Park getting ready to fight in the same month, it's kind of like heavyweight title in uh, in March. And Ortiz is a guy that has the ability to knock Deontay out, but he's also the guy, unlike anybody else Deontay's ever fought, who ha- who's good enough that if Deontay wins and wins impressively the world's going to uh, take notice and really give the guy the respect that he hasn't gotten in all corners. Let's go to the final part of uh, the the paragraph uh, at the end. You say Wilder enters the major league, and the setup for this is you talk about 
uh, the baseball swing uh, of a guy that's in the the 12th grade who is batting 750 with power to fields, uh, all the different fields, but definitely one of the best hitters in the MLB. And then you work your way down to the final couple of sentences here. You said Wilder enters the major league on Saturday, but don't be shocked if it's not just a home run, but a grand slam. Yeah, I, I, I like Deontay Wilder as a fighter. And I think he's the kind of athlete, you know, the rare breed of athlete that steps up in the big moment. And I think this is the big moment for Deontay Wilder. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, it's make or break for him. Right? You know, people are going to say, see, the first time he fought a live body, he lost. But if you win this fight, you're beating a strong, powerful, most guy that has held a heavyweight title before, that has not lost in the pro. Everybody knows that those Cubans, uh, anybody who comes out of the Cuban system is really well-schooled. And I think, you know, this, this is the kind of moment I think Wilder is going to step up. And I, I look to see Wilder win something big. And he, I look forward to seeing him get uh, Luis out of there early in the fight. I just have that feeling that Deontay knows everything that's on the line here. This is his moment. And I think this will be the fight where he steps up. And, uh, you know, I don't want to say shocks the world, but I think I think if he, if he comes up with that really impressive early knockout, that's going to really cement him as, as one of the greats. What would your strategy be if you were in the Wilder camp going up against uh, Ortiz on Saturday night? Well, I think you've got to make him fight. I mean, you know, Ortiz is a uh, 38-year-old guy, carries a lot of weight, and I think, you know, what you've got to do is you've got to jab to the body, jab to the head. So I think the first thing Deontay has to do is establish that jab, you know, go up and down with the jab, and kind of make Ortiz not sure which way you're going. And I think you got to try to fight at pace. Um, and if you're making Ortiz defend, if you're throwing a lot of punches, you know, yeah, there's always a risk of getting countered, and you don't want to get hit by a guy like that. But I think you got to try to wear him down because a big guy carrying all the weight that he carries, so he's not going to be able to uh, you know, hang at that fast pace. I think Wilder, the one good thing he's got going for him is that he has that stamina and he has that ability. If it has to go longer, then he can he can push the pace, fight at a high pace, and go. So I think I think you know, the two things you want to see him do is make uh, Ortiz work, really make him expend a lot of energy, and I think you've got to keep that jab going. You've got to go up and down, and don't fall into a predictable pattern. Kevin Ioli right now visiting with us. Okay, let's work our way to the end of the month. As you talked about the great heavyweights that's going to be fighting this month, Anthony Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker, 12 rounds, IBF, WBA, WBO, heavyweight title unification. Let's say that both of those guys, Joshua and Wilder, are able to win. Uh, Is this fight that is the people are going to demand this Wilder fight? Will we see it? Do you think money gets involved? Obviously, negotiations. Uh, Will the people get what they want and get the Wilder-Joshua fight? I do think we're going to see him. I don't think it's going to be an immediate shot next. Eddie Hearn, uh, who is the promoter of Anthony Joshua, he is on record as saying uh, that if Anthony wins against Joe Parker, you know, he, he will have three of the four major belts. Uh, he wants him to fight uh, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Uh, Jarrell Miller is going to be fighting on Showtime at the end of April. Uh, Jarrell's a, a big guy, 6'5", 290. <laughs> really a big dude. And so I think that's a, a fight that Eddie would be looking for, you know, late summer, early fall, you know, maybe that September time frame. So if Wilder and Joshua win, I think you might see each of them take an interim fight and then fight each other. November might be a good time frame to look for that fight. And uh, I, I hope it happens in 2018. Uh, and we've waited long enough for it. Uh, I know Deontay's waited long enough for it. I'm optimistic that it will happen. Do you think that will be a fight that would happen here in the States, or do you think it'll go somewhere else? Yeah, I had, uh, uh, I interviewed Eddie Hearn uh, last week. I did a, uh, a fairly lengthy video with him, and I'm talking to him about that, Ryan. And uh, he he kind of talked about, hey, we we'll fight twice. We'll fight him once in the U.S., and then we'll fight him in, uh, in the U.K. I think more than likely the fight will be in Vegas because for the kind of purse that those guys are going to command for that particular fight, you got to charge premium prices. And the only place in the state to charge those premium prices and kind of get that 
is in Vegas. So I would expect that uh, to see them fighting next, uh, you know, fall, late fall, early winter in Las Vegas. KevinIoli.com is a great website. They've got a lot of great different information. Obviously, the Hall of Fame writer that we're talking to, Kevin Ioli. Kevin, when you look at the health overall of boxing, and I know that uh, MMA and, and, and all those things have certainly distracted and, and obviously very, very popular, but let me ask you about the health of overall the sport that, that obviously we've come to love uh, because of water success. Where is the health right now of the overall state of boxing uh, in this country? You know, boxing's in a pretty good position right now. There's uh, a lot of really good fighters out there. Um, we came off a really good year in 2017 where TV ratings were up. Uh, a lot of fights were held. Uh, a lot of exciting fights were held. The problem in boxing, as always, is the promoters. You know, there's no structural organization where there's nothing they can say, hey, we're going to force the best guys to fight each other. The fact that you didn't ask me that question, will we see Wilder versus George in 2018? You know, that's a good question, but it's sad because in boxing, you don't know. And so the health of boxing always rests on the promoters. But I think if, the, if we in the media and the public put pressure on them and say, we want to see these fights, and they, you know, we're not going to let them get away with that, that can help. I think the sport is in a pretty good position right now. You know, you've got some charismatic heavyweights, and when that are good heavyweights, that raises the interest in boxing. But there are so many other good young fighters out there, uh, and ESPN is now televising on a regular basis. They have a, a series with Tony Brink, and there's a lot of boxing available now. So if you want to see some really good, really fighters, uh, this is the time to do it. It is a super follow on the Twitter account, Kevin I, Kevin Ioli, Combat Sports Writer, Yahoo Sports. Dot com. Kevin, we appreciate you loaning us uh, your expertise here in Tuscaloosa. We're we're still kind of amateurs at this, okay? I mean, Deontay has obviously taught us a lot. Uh, we've watched the growth of the sport, the popularity. Uh, and you go down to Sky Boxing, which is part of JD's here, and uh, there's so many youth involved in that because of what Deontay Wilder has uh, – you know, been able to yep. accomplish. We might have a heavyweight, uh, you know, five, ten years from now. There might be one growing here in Tuscaloosa because of Wilder's success. It's fun to see uh, this transform here in Tuscaloosa. Well, no doubt. If you can keep away from Coach Saban, you might have another champion coming after uh, Deontay. <laughs> hey, hey they, no doubt, no doubt, the athletic ability. Uh, thank you again, Kevin, and, and thank you again for helping us out, sir. Anytime, my friend. Thanks for having me.